Hey folks, welcome back to Waygate Technology. Dan here again for the Kraut Kramer Roto Array Compact. We've already connected our instrument. We've checked that all of the elements of the probe are good and ready for use. And we've done our two-point calibration. So in this episode, we are going to walk through doing a sensitivity calibration, getting equal gain or equal sensitivity on all of the virtual probes. As we scan across the face of the probe, we want each one of the individual beams to be giving us the same amplitude of indication from the same reflector. So we'll set that up first. Then we'll check our encoder uh, calibration, our distance encoder calibration. Then we'll do a simple line scan. Let's get started. We are still on the velocity calibration panel where we left off last time. So I'm going to click next panel. Now the next panel on this app is a TCG time corrected gain calibration for the sample that we're going to be working with here today. That's not going to be a terribly useful feature. We do not have steps upon which to calibrate a TCG curve. And this part is thin enough that it really wouldn't be that large of a help to us. So we're going to skip TCG and we're going to go right to the sensitivity calibration. And to do that, we have up at this end of the block, there's a groove cut in the back of the block. We can see that groove extends across all of our beams. Okay. I peek up on that groove and when I hit the calibrate button the instrument is going to look at our amplitude view and look at the variation from virtual probe to virtual probe at each step of the scan and adjust the gains on each one of those individual channels till they're all equal. So we've successfully set our sensitivity. All of the virtual probes in our scan are now giving us an equal amplitude indication from that reflector. Next step that we can do, hit panel next. And in this step, we are going to check that our encoder is properly calibrated. So I have a ruler built into my plexiglass block here, I can easily see 200 millimeters of travel, two visible lines, that notch that we just did the sensitivity calibration on is at one end of the 200 millimeters. The other end is a, another milled notch in this end. So right now we're sitting at zero. If I move it 200 millimeters, there's 200 millimeters of movement. I move back to zero, I'm correctly calibrated. We already have it programmed for the default movement of this instrument. If I need to do a calibration, if the number was off, what I would do is move to my starting position. I hit calibrate. I move it the defined distance, hit calibrate, move it back to the original position. And what we're doing here is checking for backlash. I hit calibrate one more time and we were within the allowable tolerance for backlash and we're all set to go. I hit my panel next and that brings me to the scan panel. Now by default, we are set up for a straight line, single pass scan. I'm going to squirt some water on my plate here and I can hit clear and as I roll the probe the length of the plate we begin to acquire data. Just a quick explanation of the various data views that are present on this panel. Upper left is our familiar A scan. Upper right is an E scan. And the e-scan is always one slice across the part in the line that the probe is scanning electronically. 
So it's a, an e-scan is going to be a look one slice across the part this way. On the lower and middle left, we have two C-scans. The C-scans are a map looking straight down from the top, so in that orientation. The C-scan is encoded along the scan axis, along the long axis. It's also encoded by knowing the pitch of the array and how much we're stepping at each step in the array. So we're seeing a stripe here that's about 50 millimeters wide. 64 elements at 0.8 millimeter pitch gives us about a 50 millimeter wide stripe. And again, the C scans, the overview C scans here in the lower left are showing us straight down from the top. Over here on the lower right is a B scan. So that's a side view looking into the part on this orientation. So let's wet the plate. Now we have buttons on the user interface of the software down here at the bottom. There's a start recording, a stop recording, and a clear button. Those buttons are also present on the instrument itself. We have provided hard buttons that you can use without having to reach back to the computer when you'd like to start and stop a scan. So the button on the left is start, pause, and stop. So a one fast click on that button will start the scan. Another fast click can pause the scan and another start it again or a long hold on that button will stop the recording and tell the, tell the computer that you're finished recording that scan. The button on the right is used when we are manually indexing. If we need to make more than one pass to record the entire area, then we use the index button to step over. Mostly we're going to be using the left hand button, the start pause and stop, the long hold to stop. We're going to record a single pass. So I push the start button. I run the probe down the length of the part. I do a long hold and recording has stopped. And now I can do some analysis. The first thing I want to do is draw a selection box on my overview C-scan and you'll notice what happens is the active C-scan is a zoomed in view showing just what is inside that box. The B-scan again is a view looking in from the side and again it is showing us a side view of just what is inside that box. So I'm seeing three holes of different diameters all at the same depth. All right, all are just a little over 10 millimeters deep. I can put another box on the active view and I get some measurement information. I can do the same thing on the B scan. All right, I can also move my gates around to analyze the data in different ways. I have a crosshair that I can move around on either the overview, the active view, and whatever is underneath the intersection of the crosshair is going to be what's shown in the A scan, and whatever is underneath the vertical element of that crosshair is going to be what's displayed in the sector or e-scan here in the upper right. Um, I have, looking at this, I have c-scan down here that's not terribly interesting. It's showing me a lot of noise at the moment. Let's take a look. If we go to this menu on the c-scan, we can see the data source for that view. So here I'm looking at the amplitude in gate A. So let me stretch gate A to go from more or less from the front to the back surface. 
of the part. Okay. And let's get gate B onto the screen. Let's get in here. We'll get gate B. We'll get it onto the screen. Make it a bit narrower. Let's put gate B over our back wall. And we'll make gate B a little bit wider. Then we're going to look at this view and we're going to select time of flight in gate B as our data source. So now we're using gate B to monitor our back wall and look for indications or corrosion coming off of that back surface. And in this view, we continue to look at the amplitude in gate A, which will show us indications that, uh, that are occurring um, inside of the part, inside the expected back wall. So we have a number of different ways to look at our data. Again, moving the crosshair is a very helpful way to look at different indications. Uh, here, we're looking at a slice. If we look at our e-scan, our sector scan up here, we're looking again at a slice going through the part in this direction. And I see that intersects two holes, and I, see, I can see from that that those holes are at two different depths. In our selection box here, move that out of the way. If I extend the selection box back to that row of holes and I put my crosshair back over that, that slice, there I see holes at two different depths. And on the B scan, because I'm looking in from the side and I'm looking back through three sets of holes at two different depths, I'm seeing those holes appear in the B scan at both depths. And on the E scan, I can separate those out and see the individual. So that is a, a basic scan, a manual scan, single line. We've looked at some of the different tools to use to analyze that data. If I want to save that data, I simply come down here to the lower right. I say save data. I can change the name of the file and save. If we want to come back and look at that data again later, I simply do a load data, select file, load, and there's all of our data back uh, just as we had it before. So that wraps up this episode. Uh, we'll come back in a future installment and take a look at doing multiple pass scans. Uh, if we want to record a, a scan that's wider than two inches, uh, we need to do that in repeat steps. There's a simple way to do that, and we'll take a look at that next time. Thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to learn more, the best place to reach out is your local Waygate field sales engineer or local channel partner. They will be able to uh, assist you in uh, quotes and demos. If you have technical questions, please send an email to remoteservice at bakerhughes.com and we will get an answer to you as quickly as possible. For software and updates to the instrument and documentation, please check out the InspectionWorks public store. That's www.inspectionworks.com. And under all products, look for the Roto Array Compact. And you can also visit our Waygate webpage by scanning the QR code shown on the screen here. And that will give you other information and other links to get you help. So again, thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful and we will see you in the next installment.